Hey everybody, this is Gabe here. I'm the owner and proprietor of Hero Rations. Uh, my family and I make uh, historically accurate versions of the uh, the famous World War II uh, rations, the C rations, the K rations, both the early, mid, and late war types, and the D ration uh, chocolate bar, emergency chocolate bar. And uh, really excited here. Uh, today we're gonna do an unboxing uh, of one of our morale uh, breakfast rations, which was a favorite of soldiers because it included uh, coffee. Yeah. And um, so we're going to open this up. Um, you can check us out here. It's here on the box here, but uh, I'll read it out. Uh, eBay, uh, our username is Hero Rations. Uh, we have our email there too, and our Etsy shop, Sir Coffee, that's C I R Coffee. And uh, we got these cool boxes here too. So uh, if you have an order from us, Unless it's like a super big order. Uh, we have these cool boxes here that make uh, great gift boxing ideas too. So uh, you know what showed up to your house uh, or to um, you know your, your recipient's house. So let's open this up and check it out. Um, we've made these now for, uh, geez, like over two and a half years. Uh, we have sold probably 2000, I want to say, of the K-Ration. Um, that's one of our, well, I, I would say probably our popular item right now um, is the K-Ration because I think it's the most recognized and has the most variety. Uh, so check it out. Here it is here. Um, cool printing design here on the box. So this is the morale type. So if you're not familiar with the, uh, the K-Ration, it went through um, a number of box designs early in the war. Um, so this box right here kind of appeared like in the later half of 1944. So right now it's, uh, it's November. Uh, so this would kind of be commonplace around then, uh, through the end of the war. So it did go through a number of changes, but like for like your early war, uh, D-Day impressions, this, this version would not be correct, but for like the bulge, Ardennes, anything in 1945, uh, this would be, this would be accurate. So, uh, very, very cool historically accurate design, the list of contents there. Um, so these morale boxes were a break from kind of the boring craft paper, uh, black text, minimal text design. So um, and it's got the malaria warning there on the, on the top half. Um, and so I, I've used a couple different versions of this. So the, the tuck and seal flap design uh, is my favorite because, um, you know, for Anybody that's um, purchasing these from our shop, we, we've designed them to be um, as historically accurate as possible, but also make them as reusable as possible, right? Because, you know, now we, we want to, you to be able to reuse this packaging and everything in here um, over and over again as much as possible. Uh, so on our Etsy shop, uh, we do offer individual components, or you can email me for anything that you need specifically, um, and I can send you, um, you know, a component list uh, of what we have available. Just let me know what you have and need. Um, and it also makes it easy too, right? Because you may not want to actually eat some of the things in here. You may eat some of it, so you don't have to buy a whole new box kit ration. Um, you just have to buy the one. So uh, the, the K ration design was an inner and outer box, right? You had your, your um, kind of your, your uh, cardstock outer box here, and you had a wax inner box, right? The design of this was, it was wax dip, right? You can see ours is wax dip, it's waterproof. And they put these outer cartons on here, that way in a crate, when these got hot, all that wax wouldn't stick together. Um, so my recommendation, right, and what I did when I was a reenactor was, yeah, these are these are nice, these are flashy to walk around, but they're not very durable. Um, you know, they, and they are an issued item, so, you know, beat up old ration box is not, um, I guess, cool looking in the, in the field. So most of the soldiers would scrap these or burn them, and they would just carry the waxed inner box. And that, that's what I did. Um, and these, these boxes are, unlike a lot of our competitors, right, these boxes are the true actual design. They are not resized for your standard size tuna can. We use the actual correct size can, right? That's all correct inside the box, right? So our box has, you know, the OD green can that sits here. We've got the pack of cigarettes that would sit here with your gum and matches on the top, right? And then the accessory pack would sit here, right? That's, that's the correct design. Yeah, and ours mirrors that. So our, our box here, what I've done is I've taken care to use um, a minimal amount of applied glue on the inner flap. So they are sealed. 
Um, if you want your shipped unsealed, just let me know. Um, but I do that right because it minimizes the wear on the box. You can see that I just opened that here with a with your standard um, not World War II mesh knife without a lot of force to be able to uh, open that flap. That way, if I wanted to reuse this box, I can, right, with just a little bit of glue or adhesive. And you can see some of that wax there, too. So we, we did our best. I've opened originals, and then, um, you know, there are a couple uh, YouTubers that, that uh, open original uh, World War II rations, too. So um, the experience of it kind of like opening uh, the, these modern ones, we wanted that to be as comparable to and original as possible. If you pop it open there, then you can see inside the box too, you've got your can and your cigarettes and gum coming out there. You've got these Chesterfield cigarettes here with the pull-out tray design. There's no tobacco uh, included in any of our um, uh, any of our kits, of course. Um, these boxes are, are reusable. Um, they're actually pretty cool to hide um, like snacks or vitamins if you, if you need it, um, or even like candy cigarettes. But if you are a smoker, um, you know, it takes basically four, four cigarettes, like hundred size uh, cigarettes with the filters cut, slide in there very nicely and, and off you go. This pack here, I've got a, a stick of Wrigley's uh, spearmint chewing gum. I use a couple different gum designs too. So um, we made it, obviously these are reusable. Uh, my favorite is to use the, the two piece, the candy coated Wrigley's uh, PK. Um, it's like a tablet design. Um, I think it's much better gum. It's more durable, I think. And you get, you get two pieces, which I guess is kind of nice. The meat cans. So the, uh, the entree cans uh, by this period in the war typically came with like a chopped ham and eggs in the breakfast, a uh, processed American cheese or American cheese with bacon uh, for the dinner, and the supper was like a pork uh, luncheon loaf or something similar to that, very similar to like, you know, what, what spam, I guess. Um, so the cool thing is we've got this, this vendor that does this great job giving us that correct size, like three inch can just a little over an inch thick, right? Which is, this is very, very close to the original World War II design. Um, these would be opened with like a key, like along the side originally, right? Nobody makes these anymore. They're, they're not easy to make, they're very costly, and they don't hold well in terms of like food preservation techniques. But originally there'd be like a tab here along the seam. You have that sardine key type opening and you would twist and then that pop, that top would come off and you'd probably get uh, egg and meat juice all over you doing that. So our design has just a simple flip top here uh, on the underside and um, you kind of can make these reusable, right? So I used to use like empty cans like this. I'd pull the top off, eat it, wash it, and then underneath here I'd be able to put, um, you know, prepackaged food or cheese and stuff like that up under there to kind of use it over and over again. But again, we, we sell replacements here too. So if you just want just the can or just the pack of gum or whatever it may be, uh, we, we have that available. So that's breakfast. The dinner looked like this. The dinner was like a, a processed uh, American cheese. And then dinner, uh, we have a uh, corned pork loaf. So uh, what we use for filler for these is this is um, like a, a ham, like a deviled ham uh, for the... Uh, dinner, we use either a chicken or a canned cheese if it's readily available. And then we use uh, like a Black Forest um, uh, pork loaf or ham loaf for um, the, uh, the the supper. So those are I mean, pretty close to the originals as, as we can get with what's available. And last but not least in here, tuck back in there, we've got the, the accessory packet. So this is actually why I got into making World War II rations was just, you know, the the originality of the design, right? The right size can, the right size boxes, and the accessory pack is usually kind of like a point of failure um, for, for most of the reproduced rations that I see today, which is that in this case, we've got um, the breakfast, which, you know, according to the list, comes with assorted biscuits. So I'm usually using like a K2 gram recipe and like a K4, K5, which is like a um, like a mixed wheat design or like a soda cracker. 
and then um, the K2 is like truly like a, like a graham cracker design that includes like a molasses and tastes very similar to like a very dense um, uh, graham cracker. And we've got some Jack, For uh, Jack Frost sugar cubes in there. You can see the Nescafe coffee packet. We've got our fruit bar here in the middle. Um, and, I, and I put them all here in this resealable bag. So um, the, all these items originally would be like in a sealed cellophane bag. You know, you can just pull this uh, adhesive here on the, on the edge off and then reuse this bag over and over again. You can see the adhesive there. We'll open it up here in a moment. Um, but again, like these, these biscuits are, are, are fantastic. Um, they're very, very, uh, very dense, uh, very complex recipe. And I think I've talked about it again and again in my other videos, but uh, whole wheat here that we, we grind right for the recipe using a, um, a, a stone grinder here at the house. Um, we've got a bakery that helps us make some of like the bulk order designs, uh, bulk orders um, for some of the biscuits too. And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we're invert sugar, um, powder, you know, milk powder. I mean, this isn't just your standard hardtack. Um, and that was the design of these was to be flavorful, some variety in there. Then they're very, very good. I always try to make extra. And, um, and I'll show you guys kind of how I, um, I eat this breakfast ration too. And I think, you know, I've, I've tried these numerous times and I can kind of show you my favorite. But let's check out the contents first. Then we'll just kind of get there. I want to show all the individual items on here. There's the Nescafe coffee that includes soluble uh, coffee product in there. Just tear it open and dump it in your canteen cup and put it on your stove or your fire. Uh, and it comes with uh, four uh, Jack uh, Frost sugar cubes. So um, very, very unique design. So you can see just from me holding this is not like your standard uh, sugar cube. It's a little bit thinner than a, like a, a standard sugar cube and a little bit less than two across. Um, this odd shape right now, I can only find that um, in Europe, like in Germany and the Netherlands right now, which uh, makes them a little bit tough to procure, but um, I, I hope that um, it pays dividends because it ultimately in, impacts how these correct uh, wrappers look and how it's packaged inside the K ration. So pretty cool design, just like the originals, and it's perforated along the edge too, and it's got the, the pull tab. So I can pull that open just like that and access the sugar cube. And you get four of these, which is uh, fairly remarkable. Uh, I think it's, 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 a lot of, it's a lot of sugar. These, uh, the K rations themselves uh, included a lot of sugar. Usually um, how I would make these is, um, I usually drink my coffee black or maybe like one sugar cube, maybe two. Um, but the other, I usually save the other two and I use them um, and with the, with the fruit bar, right? Um, so this is the fruit bar here. Um, it's the idea of this was to, uh, for soldiers to get their fiber. Um, it's, I'm, I'm not a big fan, uh, to be honest. Um, I mean, it's, it's okay. Um, it's, uh, it's a mixture of some different, different fruits ground up, um, like dried fruits, uh, kind of pressed together and then formed here in this tray. I, I do kind of do like the loose wrap ones too without the tray, which is which is accurate. And it is kind of nice because it's one less packaging item to have to repackage or worry about. But usually what I do with this is I'll go ahead and just like take maybe about like half of it, maybe three quarters of it. And I'll put it right here in the mess, uh, the mess kit like on one side and I'll heat it up. I'll add like a little bit of water uh, from my canteen and I'll heat it up. So I've got my, I got would have my hot water going from my canteen cup that open here. Probably just should have darn it, took all this outside and and uh, made it right, right from scratch like I usually do. But I would take my canteen cup, put it right on there, make my coffee. And while I'm enjoying that or waiting for that to cool, this fruit bar, I'd put it here on one side of the, um, the tray uh, and actually add uh, one or two of the additional sugar cubes into it. And while that's heating up, um, it kind of creates like a like a jelly, which is uh, which is kind of nice. And that was the uh, the instructions actually. I think on the box actually includes to 
The fruit bar can be eaten cold or make a jam by stewing three to five minutes in about four spoonfuls of water. Um, and it's true, it, it does. It, it dissolves. I like to add the sugar, the other extra sugar cubes, because it makes it sweet. Um, and then with the biscuits, um, these graham cracker biscuits, these are perfect with the, the, um, uh, with the ham and eggs. Uh, honestly, if you've never tried spam and eggs with graham crackers, you're missing out. Like the sweetness of uh, the graham cracker with the like the saltiness of the the ham and the uh, or the spam and the eggs is, is absolutely fantastic. And then with the um, the K4 K5 biscuits, that's what I'm using to eat the um, the jelly. Let me check out the biscuits here too. So um, these are formed correct, and again, one of the reasons I got into making um, K rations produce K rations was, was the biscuits. Uh, I got tired of using uh, cut up graham crackers or club crackers, which you can tell just by the thickness and the length, totally incorrect, right? Um, these are very, pretty complex recipes. They are cell correctly cellophane wrapped and heat, heat shrunk just like the originals. And uh, they're run through a mold that's got the, uh, the maker design right on there. Oh, well, K4 ones will maybe a little bit harder to read, uh, but the whole pattern um, and uh, impression by the maker is, uh, is accurate. And uh, I love making these and I, I, and I do enjoy them. And again, it was kind of like the, uh, the kick in the butt I had to, to start making the, uh, the K rations. So that it is here. Um, that is your, um, your breakfast uh, K ration. That's uh, correct for um, that later period of the war, 1944, late into 1945. Uh, be sure to check out our other videos uh, where uh, I do an opening of the uh, the dinner. And I definitely probably owe one here for the supper here shortly as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a couple things about uh, the World War II uh, K-Ration, the design contents. And again, check us out. And check out our listings on eBay at Hero Rations. Email me at herorations at gmail.com or check out our Etsy shop at Sir Coffee, C-I-R Coffee. We appreciate your business and uh, be sure to like and share our video. Thanks, everybody.